Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to provide an overview of cervical spondylosis. Cervical spondylosis is the medical term for age-related degeneration of the cervical spine. This video is an excerpt from a broader course on the full topic. If you're interested in learning more about cervical spondylosis, we've left a link in the description. In this scene, we're going to provide an overview of cervical spondylosis, really provide a very high level to lay the foundation for subsequent sections. So the cervical spine is made up of these seven blocks in the neck. Uh, these blocks are held together by different ligaments that we'll talk about going forward. But if you have not seen chapter one where we really get into the details of cervical spine anatomy, I would really encourage you to do that. Now when you look at this, you can see this is the skeletal part of the neck. It holds the head, kind of connects the head to the chest part, and again is made up of seven blocks that we'll talk about in greater detail. Now those blocks are held together by some important structures, discs and ligaments, and here you can see these ligaments that are kind of strapping the spine together. And these are elastic structures that allow for flexibility because the bones themselves are not flexible. You can see the, the ligaments over here and the discs are these little blue structures that are between them. Those are some of the structures that wear out over time, and that is what cervical spondylosis is. Now as the spine is being used with flexion, extension, turning your head over years, really decades, these discs will see a fair amount of wear and tear. And here you can see this is a disc, this is a disc. Those are cushions between these bones that allow for flexibility. And that flexibility comes with a little bit of a cost. Obviously, it's an important way of how we interact and engage with the world. But that cost is really that the discs themselves wear out, much like tires on your car wear out with mileage. So these discs, when they're under stress, they take a little bit of wear and tear, and over time, we'll see findings of degeneration. And that's really what we're going to talk about when we talk about degenerative discs. So I would like to lay out a couple of views that we're going to look at to understand this complex three-dimensional uh, structure that we call the cervical spine. This is just a picture like we're looking at somebody from the side. Here they're standing up, they're looking in this direction, so the front of their spine of course is over here, the back of their spine is over there. Now this is useful to kind of have a high level understanding of the, the bones and the joints and some of the structures that are coming out of it, but it's hard to really understand the relationship, the intimate relationship really between all of these different structures. We're going to look at a couple of slice views or uh, tomographic views. If you look at a line like this, this is a slice of my neck through here, and pull up a picture of it, it would look like this. So this is an axial view or an axial projection. Here you can see the front of the spine would be here and the back of the spine would be there. The spinal cord runs right in the center of the spinal canal and there's nerves that go out on either side. You can see the intervertebral disc or the disc that we call it made up of different parts, and it sits immediately in front of the nerves and the spinal cord. You can see these joints back here, you can see the bones that make up the back of the spinal arch, and the ligaments that are right behind the spinal cord here that are part of, this is the ligament of flavum, or the so-called yellow ligament, that hold these bones together. And as all of these structures wear out, it will have an impact on the nerves and the spinal cord, or it may have an impact on that, and cause different symptoms that we'll get into actually in the next chapter. Now, th that was an important view, but if you imagine a view like this, where you take a straight slice down the center of somebody, this is a traditional view, what we call the sagittal view, and we talked about that in chapter two. Here you can see the spinal column right here and the discs that hold everything together, and you can see the spinal cord right here. So this is an important view to kind of see some of the structures, the ligaments that you can see back here, the spinal cord and the bones, but you do not see the nerve and you don't see any of the joints here, and that's because it's not in the plane of this section. So there's another view which is going to be important, which is like this, which is an oblique view or an angular view. We're taking a slice through the spine, but kind of off axis. And what it really is designed to show us is the space that this nerve comes out of what's called the foramen. Now these are uncommon to get in MRIs, but some MRI centers, very good MRI centers, will give you oblique views like this to really understand what's happening to the nerves. And you can imagine on a slice like this, which would look like this, you can't see the spinal cord. So that first sagittal slice is good for looking at the spinal cord. This slice with this oblique view is good for looking at the nerves themselves as they leave through this little window called the neural foramen. We'll talk about that in greater detail, but here you can see the nerve right there. You can still see some of the disc, you can still see some of the bones, and you can see the joints on this picture here. But this is another view that we'll use to kind of highlight the different findings of cervical spondylosis. So now, if you look at just a regular sagittal slice looking at the spine, here you can see the spinal column in the front, here you see the disc, 
discs, the vertebral bodies. You see the spinal cord running right here. And these are nice. This is like meant to be kind of a normal picture of what the cervical spine would look like. Now, as the spine wears out, you can see these normal discs will pick up wear and tear. And this illustration will show like a normal disc up here. It looks great. But you'll see kind of increasingly worse discs as you go down. This disc at C3-4, you can see it's lost a little bit of its sponginess and a little bit of its height. This one is even a little bit more collapsed. And these two are all but gone, right? You can start seeing some reactive changes in the bone themselves. And this is really meant to illustrate that there is a degenerative cascade that discs slowly degenerate. They don't go overnight from here to here but that slowly over time they get worse and over time can, can start looking more and more um, uh, degenerated like you see in some of these discs that are low down here. On a high level, cervical spondylosis then is age-related wear and tear that will affect all of the different structures of the cervical spine. So it'll affect the bones, it'll affect the discs, and it'll affect the ligaments. And as those wear out over time, they can cause pressure on the nerves and the spinal cord and cause a variety of different symptoms that we will talk about in the next chapter. In this chapter, primarily, we're going to talk about the structural features or the structural findings of cervical spondylosis. So if you imagine the degenerative cascade, as we talked about right here, it starts with the discs that look really healthy. And then the discs lose their water content, as exemplified over here in a couple of these discs. And as they lose their water content, think of that as like they lose some of their sponginess, they lose their turgor. They're not as effective as a cushion kind of covering between the two bones. They start losing their height because they lose their sponginess. And you can see that over here in this disc and this disc over there. Now, if they lose enough height, it's no longer an effective cushion between bones. You start seeing some reaction. The bone, which is kind of bone on bone, can start becoming what we call sclerotic, and you see these bone spurs kind of forming here. Think of that as being two bones that are just being rubbing against each other because there is no good cushion between them. You start seeing some reactive bone changes, or what we call osteophytes. It will affect some of the structures in the front, but there are structures in the back that will be affected, and we will talk about that when we talk about bone spurs and uh, bony degeneration. The ligaments back here can sometimes thicken over time. That's part of the cascade. And you could think of that on a simple level as being uh, your body's reaction to the fact that there's so much degeneration. Your body is trying to hold everything still to kind of minimize uh, um, the symptoms that come of instability or other kinds of degeneration. And then there can be alignment changes. Like you can see here, this person's spine has become pretty straight because the cushions, when they're gone, people tend to lean, their neck tends to fall forward, and we call that kyphosis. So we'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about alignment. But that is the general cascade, that things start with really healthy discs, and slowly over time, this can happen. It doesn't happen to everybody, but that's the cascade of things and the mechanisms whereby the bones and the discs and the ligaments can all be affected. So the last thing to mention is really instability. When instability develops, it does not develop in everybody. And so I put it into this chapter just to talk about it for the people for whom it's relevant. We look for it in everyone, but it may not be present in many people. So if you think about the different structures that are affected by degeneration, again, there's the intervertebral discs. That's what we will talk about first when we talk about degenerative disc disease. There's the cervical ligaments, which can be affected by degeneration as well, and we'll talk about that in its own section. Then there's the bones themselves, so the vertebral bodies, the joints in the back, some of the different places where the bones rub together. We'll talk about that in a section on bony degeneration. And then there's impact on cervical alignment and stability, and we'll dedicate kind of a small section to that as well for the people for whom that is really relevant. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.